Hello and welcome into the KE Report. I'm your host, Shad Markwitz, and today we're getting an update on Abra Silver Resource Corp. Traded on the TSXV under the ticker ABRA and on the OTCQX under the ticker ABBRF. And I'm joined today with the president and CEO, John Miniotis, and the chief geologist, Dave O'Connor. And John and Dave, great to get you on the show, as always, especially when it's to talk about drill results. So got a couple of uh, updates in a recent release you just put out to the market yesterday on October 23rd. And so a couple different targets here, some new holes extending the jack zone, some new holes in the occultal northeast area, and a new discovery dubbed the Sombra target. We'll get into all of that, but just John from a high level, kick us off with some of the key takeaways as far as all of the drilling you're doing here in this phase four program. Sounds great. Thanks as always for for having us back. Say first off, I mean, we certainly have lots going on within Hacker at the moment. So it's really great to to provide an update during during these uh, very, very exciting times for us here. So yeah, so just high level in terms of our latest announcement, a few key things to point out. So we actually had a couple headline holes with excellent intercepts as part of this announcement. The first one uh, was a step out hole. Uh, this was outside of the boundary of our of our high grade jack deposit. And that hole hit 250 grams per ton of silver over a 50 meter interval. So of course, a very, very wide interval there uh, with very high grades. And that included uh, five meters within which there was over one kilogram of silver. So, you know, on a grade thickness basis, I think that was actually the, the best hole that we've drilled so far as part of our phase four drill program, uh, which, of course, is undergoing uh, right now. So hopefully we'll be able to, to beat that shortly. But to date, that's certainly been the, the best hole that we've drilled on a grade thickness basis. And importantly, it was a step out hole. So it was at least 50 meters beyond the boundary of Jack. So it's, it's always great to continue to grow jack uh, with extremely high grades outside of the pit boundary. So that was uh, the one hole. The second headline hole that we announced uh, was actually at Oculto Northeast. So this is in the opposite direction of jack. Of course, the jack deposit is, is in the southwestern area. And this uh, hole at Oculto is in the northeastern part of the pit. And here at Oculto, we hit even higher silver grades than our hole at Jack. So we actually intersected 500 or roughly 500 grams per ton of silver. And there was over a 15 meter intercept. And there again, we hit over a kilo of silver. So 1.1 kilos over, I think it was a close to six meter intercept. So that was on a great thickness basis, the, the best hole we've hit in the Oculto zone, part of this current drill campaign. So clearly, we're, I'd say, very, very happy uh, with both those uh, results. We're continuing to grow the deposit here in both directions, towards the southwest at Jack, towards Oculto in the northeast. Uh, importantly, that Oculto hole, that's within the pit, but that was in an area that was uh, currently being classified as waste. Yeah, so, of course, that's going to add a lot of value. All these holes will add uh, a lot of value here uh, down the road when we update the, the overall mine plan here. So it's great. And then, yeah, also, I guess third off, I mean, uh, this uh, new target area. So this was a, an area that's never been drilled before. It's about 500 meters south of Oculto. Uh, we're calling this now the, the new Sombra target. And there we, we drilled our, our first hole in this new zone. And it came back with encouraging intercept. So it was 22 meters, uh, just over 40 grams per ton of silver. But importantly, that was located very, very close to surface. It started at only uh, just over 40 meters downhole depth. Uh, so that's good grades for something close to surface. It looks like a promising area. Of course, we're, we're going to be following that up with additional drilling. And hopefully in that new zone, we can hit some higher grades down the road. But I'd say a very, very encouraging sign and obviously warrants uh, additional follow-up drilling there over the, the coming weeks and months ahead. All right, John, I appreciate that. It's kind of snapshot of all three. But Dave, you know, I'm going to bring you in here and dive deep on each one of these. Let's just take them one at a time. As far as the Jack extension, for people that think Jack is over or think Jack is, you know, already defined, what does it mean to keep stepping out and keep finding, you know, pretty nice grades, high grades, something you know, like you say, one of the best grade meter intercepts of the phase four program? What does this mean for the Jack zone to keep extending it to the south? Well, the jack zone on the southeast end is a little bit complicated geologically, which is a good thing from a point of view of mineralization. 
we think there's a perpendicular structure there going up to alpaca. And um, if you interpret these things correctly, uh, this hole and uh, holes to the north uh, west of the uh, end of, of Jack would uh, go along that parallel zone. So uh, we're testing the various targets. We have tested various targets in the Jack Southwest area. We've got about uh, 17 or 18 holes waiting for analyses in the uh, in that area. So yes, uh, we will be expanding the resource in the Jack Southwest area in various directions. That's Jack. Do you want me to talk about the others? Well, let me ask him some specific questions. So on the Occulto pit, that the area, and you keep pushing that to the northeast, I think a lot of people have an idea in their mind that Occulto is a known entity. I've heard actually several high-profile people say that in interviews on other channels or even to us privately. Like, oh, well, Occulto's there, and we know it's there, and it's kind of a done deal. I mean, you continue to hit pay dirt. You continue to show extension. So maybe speak to why Occulto is still growing. Towards the northeast, the topography goes up. In other words, it's a hill. And uh, because of that, the, the levels of mineralization that we were drilling before would be too deep to be open pitable. We are now exploring and intersecting mineralization at shallower depths. There's a zone that we're calling the silver enriched zone, which extends towards the northeast. So um, we'll be expanding that out beyond the pit. We're marching from within the pit to beyond the pit. We'll be expanding that to beyond the pit towards the northeast. And also, we have had some detailed geological structural mapping done there, and we've identified the uh, targets, highly silicious or silicified zones in that area that we believe will be mineralized. So we've got a whole program of, of, of drilling going out in what going on in what's called the Occulto Northeast, which is an extension of the pit, and the Cerro Bio area. Now, the Cerro Bio area is an area where historical drilling hit high-grade historical reverse circulation drilling, unfortunately, hit high-grade uh, gold at, at shallow depths. So when I say, un unfortunately, we don't have a great deal of confidence in the in the reliability of the results of, of reverse circulation. So we've already drilled a twin hole to test that. And uh, I won't talk about that, but we were carrying on drilling to expand resources in the in the northeast area. And once again, it's structurally uh, a little bit complex, which is a good thing, because there are multiple targets in the northeast area that we, we are actually drilling right now. Yeah, often then geology complexity is good. It means there's a lot of different systems and ideas weaving together. And the only way to know the truth is to put the truth machine down in there, the drill bit. So I think people will be excited to see how the occultal northeast keeps extending, but also some of those holes you put into Cerro Bio when those results come back in. Love to have you guys back on to discuss that. And then, Dave, obviously you've made a new discovery here at the Sombra target. Now, this is outside of the known resources. It's undercover. Maybe just tell people listening why you decided to test it with this hole, what the follow-up holes look like. And, you know, obviously it's the first hole. It's not the most amazing grade compared to the rest of the project, but it's also just the first hole into this whole area. So tell us about why this was a target in the first place. The whole of the southwest area beyond the Occulto zone is essentially not a valley, but a, a plain on which has developed a, a, a colluvial cover. So there's no outcropping there at all. Uh, we found Jack by following up a trend of magnetic low trend continuing on from Occulto. There's a parallel magnetic low trend 500 meters south, and that's uh, where we uh, just drilled the, uh, the, the Sombra hole. Now, if you project that hole, if you project that zone, which is also an interesting topographic feature, if you project that zone towards the northeast or the, or the east-northeast, you end up at Cerebio. So that's our... Uh, thesis at the moment is we've got a parallel zone of mineralization, which is 500 meters south of the Occulto Jack zone, which may connect up with the, with Cerro Bio in the, on, in the northeastern end. That's, uh, from our geological point of view, quite, quite interesting. I mean, um, that first hole um, hit a broad zone of mineralization. It only went down to 135 meters depth and then it hit basement. But it, it went through around about uh, 45 meters of unconsolidated collusion and got the mineralization directly underneath that which is good. That's just what happened to Jack. So um, we've got two holes planned already, one to the north and one to the south, to test the, the thickness of that system, and then we'll start marching on towards the east-northeast, towards Cerebio, to see how long it is. 
Yeah, I don't think anybody listening is going to be upset if you have a whole parallel trend here that connects from Sombra up to Sarabio. That could be pretty exciting, but we'll keep following along with the future holes to see how things start developing with the structure. And then as you march, like you say, to the Northeast. Well, John, I want to bring you back in here too, to just to mention that even in addition to the silver and gold targets that you're hitting, you're also still working on some copper porphyry targets. And there's been some interest in the copper side of things, not just from investors, but also from some of your strategic stakeholders like Ken Ross. So maybe to speak to the copper porphyry targets, what's the plan there? How are things going? So we mentioned in the, the announcement that we've actually started drilling the first hole in that porphyry complex. So this is still at Diablilos. So within the lar large land package that we have, about three and a half kilometers to the northeast of the Colto resource, we've always known that there's a some outcropping porphyry potential there uh, near surface, not really mineralized that surface, but we've known that there's a potential for, for a large scale copper gold molly uh, porphyry system here down deeper. And so, yeah, this year we decided as part of the phase four drill program, we're going to drill a minimum of three holes, uh, likely, potentially, we're already planning a fourth hole as well, but a minimum of three deeper holes to test that complex there. The first hole is well underway, and it's at the Cerro Viejo target. I believe the, the second hole has already been planned for Cerro Viejo. And then the third one uh, will be a deeper hole into the Cerro Blanco target. So, yeah, lots of excitement. I think those will start getting probably those uh, results maybe in, in early January or so. But, yeah, three, a minimum of, of three uh, holes there testing for the potential here of uh, this project also, uh, <laughs> hopefully hosting a, a copper gold porphyry system, in addition to obviously all the all the silver and gold that, that we've already identified out of Kulto and Jack. Well, and I think that's a good point that there's gold along with the copper. And Dave, I may throw this over to you just for these copper porphyry targets, Cerro Viejo and Cerro Blanco. What can you tell us about this whole area? You know, how richly endowed could it be with not just copper, but also gold? Well, John just said that there's lots of excitement, and uh, he told me not to tell you how excited I am, so I won't. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, what I'll tell you is a few facts. There's um, a, a zone of um, silicious porphyry, which we call the Big Black Breccia. The, uh, the, the cement of that is jerosite, which, uh, which used to be sulfides, which is oxidized sulfides. Uh, we've got high-grade molybdenum and gold outcropping there from, from rock samples, which is at Cerro Blanco, which is in the in the northeastern part of that. And uh, we've got D-type veining in outcropping rock in the Cerro Viejo area. And we're drilling now some uh, coincident chargeability and resistivity zones. I won't call them anomalies. Everything is anomaly. I mean, two chargeability and resistivity zones coinciding, both at, uh, at Cerro Viejo and at Cerro Blanco. So... Um, I've modified the holes to include the, what we know of the surface mineralization anyway. And just north of where we've drilled, or where, where we are drilling now the first hole, there's a substantial amount, well, the 0 0.25, 0 0.24 grams per ton gold in a cumulative number of shallow drill holes, 600 meters plus of 0.25 in, in shallow drill holes, about five or six holes, which went down to around about 100 meters depth. Uh, so I thought we would include something that goes underneath that as well. And that's where the, the first hole is going. All right. Well, I think it's going to be a lot of eyeballs on these results when they come back, gentlemen. So keep us posted on these copper gold porphyry targets at Cerro Viejo and Cerro Blanco. It's kind of just a new exciting area. And yeah, still part of the whole Diablilos land package here in project. So multiple zones of interest going on all at once with Abra Silver. I guess, John, wrap us up with the expected news flow from the continued phase four drilling and also the key catalyst coming up in the pre-feasibility study, which I believe is due out by year end, which will include, you know, a lot of additional drilling and de-risking work, but also the big advantages from the RIGI changes to the Argentina law. And maybe just explain again how impactful that should be in this update to the economics. Yeah, no, that, that's great. Yeah, just as, as we wrap up, I guess then to reiterate, I mean, Abra really is at a pivotal stage right now. Lots and lots of catalysts on the horizon. Of course, we're drilling. The 20,000 meter drill program is progressing well. So expect several more results coming in from Jack, Oculto, some of these other areas, testing for oxides. Uh, we've also just started drilling the, the porphyry target, looking for a big, uh, hopefully, copper gold porphyry there as well. Those results should come in hand here within the next few months. And in parallel to all this drilling, 
We've always been working on the updated pre-feasibility study, which is going to include some very, very significant positive results, we believe. So the, the RIGI, which was implemented in July, significantly reduced the overall tax rate in Argentina, eliminated export duties, introduced other very, very favorable economic factors as well. So we're going to incorporate all of those into an updated pre-feasibility study. We've also optimized the mine plan further. So even though the study is going to be based on the same reserve statement as the, the March study, we have an optimized scenario, an optimized mine plan that, that's going to get incorporated. We're really looking forward to that updated pre-feasibility study, and that continues to be on track to be announced before year end. Uh, so just lots going on uh, within the company. And as I mentioned, very, very exciting times. Uh, I think we're we're really in, in a fabulous position here, especially with silver and gold prices, of course, starting to heat up now. Many new investors starting to pay attention. And yeah, we're, we're as busy as we've ever been here. Just, you know, with everything going on and obviously uh, marketing uh, the story here to, to new prospective investors. So really, really exciting time for us, I'd say. All right. Well, we'll wrap it up there. But yeah, lots of work on the ground, lots of de-risking work going on, lots of desktop work going on, hitting in multiple areas, multiple kinds of mineralization, a lot going on with Abra Silver. So if people listening in want to follow along with all the news, definitely click on the link below this interview. It takes you right over to the Abra Silver resource website, straight to their news section. And then you too can follow along with the results as they're released to the market. John, Dave, always great having you on. Keep me posted as more news hits. We'll get you back on for an update and looking forward to our next conversation. Sounds great. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Chad.